Welcome to Microsoft Access 2013 Beginner Level 1, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com here on YouTube. This video is Lesson 8 of 12 plus an introduction. If this is the first video you're watching in the series, click on the link shown to start this course from the beginning. Otherwise, we'll start Lesson 8 right now. In Lesson 8, we're going to learn how to sort and filter the data in our tables. In the last couple of classes, we loaded some data into our customer table. Right now, as you can see down here, we only have 11 records in our table, which makes the data pretty manageable. What happens when we get 1,100 or 11,000 records in our table? Then the information becomes a little more difficult to work with. Right now, for example, if I wanted to find all the customers from New York, I could just scroll over and I can clearly see where they are. If I've got 11,000 records in my customer table, it might not be as easy to find the customers from New York. In my customer database, for example, I've got over 40,000 records. Very difficult to find all the customers from New York when you've got 40,000 records. So what do you do when the boss comes up and says, okay, I want a list of just customers from New York, sorted by last name, and I want it on my desk in five minutes. What do you do? In Table Data Sheet View, you can easily sort or filter data to show just the information that you want. Sorting is pretty easy. All you have to do is find the little arrow next to the column name. Right there, for example, is last name's arrow. Drop it down and then pick sort A to Z or sort Z to A, ascending or descending. I'm going to pick sort ascending. And there you go. All of your records are sorted. You can do that with any column that you want. And don't worry about the data getting scrambled. Each record stays together. So Anna and PCOR don't get separated, for example. In some older versions of Excel, if you sorted a single column without selecting all of the data, it would sort just that column and scramble the data. But in Access, each record stays together nicely. If you want to sort by company name, for example, sort A to Z. There you go. They're sorted. If you want to sort by state, just slide over here, find state, and sort A to Z. Notice that empty records show up up top here. So if you have any records that don't have values in them, they'll show up up top. If I sort by city, you can see which customers are missing city. If you sort a numeric field, like our num employees, sort smallest to largest or largest to smallest. I'll sort largest to smallest. Now remember, phone is a text field. And if I change one of these, let's change this to just 562. If I sort this column now, sort A to Z, because it's text, look what happens. Alphanumerically, the 5 falls in with the 5s. Those are not sorted numerically, which is very important. The data type determines the sort method. All right, I'll put that back. I don't remember what it was, but I'll just cheat. There we go. A date time field, like customer cents. It sorts oldest to newest or newest to oldest. Let's go oldest to newest. And there's customer cents. Now we will have a class in the future going over advanced sorting techniques. You can set up things like a multi-column sort. So it sorts by last name, then first name. Or you can sort by state, then city. For now, that's good enough. Let's come up here in the sort and filter group and click on Remove Sort. That will clear whatever sorts you have and restore the records to the order they were entered in. You can also filter your data to display a subset of the records. For example, the boss only wants to see records from New York. So I can click on the drop-down box here for state. And here, you'll see a list of checkboxes. Right now, all of the boxes are checked, which means you're seeing all of the records. If you only want to see the records from New York, I'm going to click the Select All box that turns all of these off, then just check on the New York box that will show only the records from New York. If I hit OK, there they are. Now the other records are OK. They're still in the table, 
I'm just seeing a filtered list. Down here on the bottom, in fact, it says filtered. This tells you this is a subset of the data. It's not all here. You can tell you have filtered results in a couple of different ways. First, you can see the symbol there. That means filtered. This is highlighted. That says filtered. It says filtered in the status bar down here. And up in the ribbon, you can see this guy, which is the filtered button, is also highlighted. So when you've got filtered records, Access does a pretty good job of warning you that this is a filtered set of data. Notice down here, next to the navigation buttons, we'll talk about the navigation buttons in a future lesson, you can see it says one of five. We have 11 records in the table, but I'm only seeing one of five. Why? Because the records are filtered. Now you can apply multiple filters at the same time if you want to. For example, right now we're filtered by New York. You can also say, I only want to see customers from Buffalo. So drop this down and then pick just Buffalo. You can uncheck these manually or you can hit the select all button and then just check Buffalo, whichever way you want to do it. Now I have two filters in place, only customers from New York and only customers from Buffalo. You can apply filters and then a sort if you have lots of records. For example, you can filter for Buffalo, New York, and then sort by address, which they already are. Now, to give this to the boss, you can simply print it out by coming up here, clicking on File, then come down to Print. Now you can either select Quick Print, which sends the object, directly to the printer without making any changes. If you have only one printer set up, that's the best option usually. Or if you have to pick from multiple printers, you can click the print button. Or if you want to see it before you print it, hit print preview. We'll talk more about these printing options later. I don't really want to print right now, so I'm just going to hit this back button up here and then we'll close the file tab. Now, I'm done with my filter and sort, so I want to remove the sort and the filter. I'm going to click on the Remove Sort button, and then this little guy right here is Remove Filter. Remember I told you earlier that the ribbon may change depending on how big your window is. Well, I'm going to resize the window right now, make it bigger. And when I resize it so the window's larger, notice you can see it says Toggle Filter. If I click that, it turns the filter off. See, on or off. It will keep your last filter settings so you can turn them on and off if you want to. See that? Notice down here it now says 1 of 11 unfiltered. That means there's no filter applied. Now sorting and filtering in the table are okay for you, the developer. Remember, we don't want our end users working directly with our tables. We're going to keep our end users to working with forms and reports, and sometimes a query or two. If you're building a database for other people to use, you want to keep them out of the tables. There's just too much room for them getting in there and messing things up. These tools in here, the sorts and filters, this is okay for you to get in here. Maybe you want to do a quick sort or a quick filter and just see some information. But in the long run, you're going to be working mostly with forms and reports. I admit that even sometimes I go right straight into the tables because I want to see something. But generally, we're not going to work with tables that much. The good news is you can also use these sorting and filtering techniques in your forms, too, and we'll talk about that in a future lesson. Now, one of the downsides with sorting and filtering is that the sort and filter settings are not permanent. Now, one of the downsides with sorting and filtering is that sort and filter settings are not permanent. For example, if I sort by first name, close the table, it's going to ask me if I want to save design changes to the customer T. I'll say yes. Now, if I open it back up again, okay, fine. It's sorted by first name. But you know what? Someone else comes in here and then sorts by company name. Close the table. Save changes, sure. Now, my original sort is gone, right? Now it's sorted by company name. So if you want two different ways to look at this data, a list sorted by first name and then a separate list sorted by company name, you have to come in here and apply that sort each time manually. Now, this was a very simple sort, but what if you've got a filter, let's say Buffalo, New York, customers with credit limits over $2,000, sorted by last name and first name? Do you want to have to keep coming in here every time and reapplying all those filters and sorts manually? 
know that's a lot of work, especially if you have someone in your office that needs these reports and they don't know access that well. Now, this is where queries come in. A query is essentially a different way of viewing the data in your tables, and you can filter and sort the data and save it. So you can set up queries that are customers from Buffalo, New York with $3,000 or more credit limits sorted by last name, first name. Save that as a query. We'll see how that works in the next lesson. Queries allow you to set up different customized lists of data, save them, and then just open them back up again by double clicking. You don't have to come in here and do any work. Someone who doesn't know access can just double click to run the query and see that set of data that you've set up. So in the next lesson, we'll set up a query to do exactly what we just did in the table, but we'll be able to save it and pull it up in the future with a single double click. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and comment below. I post new videos all the time, so be sure to subscribe to my channel for updates. Click to begin lesson 9 right now. And also, click to visit my website, accesslearningzone.com, for more free videos and to sign up for the entire Level 2 series for just $1.